situation. Mm. I think I think that's it. Yep. Here we are. Well, let me text my friends so they can watch us like <laughs> so we can have some audience. I think I think that's oh, it. Oh, wait, hold up. Yep. Here we are. I need to I need to, I need to mute this. Okay, yeah, there we are. Okay. Noise. All right. Very good. So, so who are you? Are you Esme? Are you Ezzy? Oh. Esmeralda. I'm Esmeralda. All right. But people call me Essie, Esme, Esme. Okay. So uh, I know that you uh, you maybe watched one or two conversations that I did. And then when I was with Mr. William Richardson, we kind of chatted about it. And then how did it come up, you and I potentially doing this? I think I had things to say about your conversation with William. And he goes, well, you should tell Paul. Why don't you tell Paul? And because uh, he was saying, well, it's easy just to say whatever you want after the fact. It's hard to be. Uh, in a conversation live with somebody else and exposing your ideas and trying to, you know, put him, organize him um, and expose him like that in front of whoever <laughs> gets to watch this kind of conversation. So I was like, no, maybe not. But then, uh, yeah, he, he's right. I think you guys, uh, uh, just to have a conversation like the ones that you make uh, it's useful and it's beneficial for everybody. So do you uh, remember what it was? Cause I forgot. Cause we had a, we had a conversation yeah. about it where you said, Hey, you know, it made me feel a certain way. Kind of like it bothered you some things I was saying. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. I you don't for, remember exactly. Yeah, I forgot. It was something about religion and I can I can remember the exact the specifics of what uh, that prompted me to have a comment about it. Yeah, I don't remember that. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll let it slide. Well, <laughs> you don't want to steer the. Don't be a plunger, uh, Paul. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I remember you kind of expressed, and it was good that you brought those things up because. It was kind of like, if you feel that way, you're not the only one. You know what I mean? That means somebody else watching yeah. is, could be feeling the same way. Right. You know what I mean? Because it, it's hard, too, you know, when you have a conversation because you're speaking to the person, but especially if it's being broadcast, yeah. you know, it's but that's that's one of the main reasons why I like having the conversations, because you can you can go through everything versus if it's just me talking to the camera. It's kind of like, you know, I don't get that kind of pushback and then I can explain myself better, maybe, you know? Yeah. yeah, but it also creates, I think, some bias too, because when you know people are going to watch you say certain things that you might say, like I might tell you in private, mm -hmm. but then you're thinking, even if people think, oh, I, don't, I don't care what people think or whatever, in the back of your head, you might be thinking, oh shit, now... I better watch what I say because people don't know that I have this kind of ideas or that I yeah. have this kind of opinion. So it can be, you know, pros and cons about having this kind of thing. I think I remember part of the comments. It was about something. I know it was about a religious thing that you said. Mm -hmm. And I said something to the extent that I didn't need to, something to the extent that I didn't need anybody to come and try to prove that, that um, God exists or because that's something that I think in my experience have come up more like, a, yeah, like an experience. I cannot explain it. I know I believe in God. I know I'm not crazy about the structure of church and the rituals that, for example, 
the Christian Catholic follow. I'm a, I'm a so-called Christian Catholic, but I don't do a number of things that you're supposed to do when you're a Christian Catholic. So it was something like that, but in my heart, or I know I, I want to believe, I want to believe, I want to believe and I believe, I think. But if anybody puts that in question, yeah, that's fine with me too, because I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to put it into words and how to, you know, I wouldn't even try to convince somebody. And, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's a personal thing uh, right. to me, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, when, when I think about religion and for, for my own self personally, like I don't want to come off like uh, like you have to be able to justify your position because I actually respect that position too. People who just believe, they, I, mm -hmm. I actually think that that's a gift and that's a good thing. Um, of course, other people will look at it in a different way, but um, I guess just coming back from the background that I, I came from, you know, being atheist, I can relate to people who don't believe. And after mm -hmm. seeing all the, the evidence in support of it, uh, that I'm just fascinated by it. It interests me. Plus, mm -hmm. I think it's good too, if it's true, like for example, you say that you believe, I believe. I just think it's good to kind of know, of course, you don't have to. I'm just saying in general, it might be a good thing, at least the way I think about it, to be able to kind of talk about it in a certain way that could potentially get people's heads turning to at least start to go down that road. Um, so I, I see what you're saying, because when I say that, it's kind of like, because what I'm about to say might seem like I'm pointing the finger at, let's say, somebody like you. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm thinking is, if let's say somebody asked me, well, why do you believe in God, Paul? And I say, well, it's just, I just do. It's just a feeling. Mm -hmm. That's probably not going to do much on their end to mm -hmm. kind of move them in that direction. Right. Uh, but because of the way I think about it, and I believe it's so good, and I believe that it's true i think that it's good to move people in that direction you know yeah so. and actually the catholic church that's one of the obligations you're supposed to i don't know how to say that in english evangelizar mm -hmm. um whoever you know you know you might want to invite them sometime and come to church and talk about it and all that i just that's not my cup of tea just right. because there's so many things that, you know, divide people these days. And I, I know guys like you, Will, it's like that too. Like he wants to have this conversation. So maybe, you know, have people thinking and um, experience other things and maybe explore a different point of view. I'm more pessimistic in that sense. And I'm like, that's your own deal. I'm doing <laughs> what I can. And I don't want to, you know, that, that's, that's not what I personally why, would want to take on. Uh, I know people that get mad about it. They feel disrespected or whatever. So I guess in my personal interactions with my friends or people that I know, I try not to touch on a thing like that. Like touchy subjects, mm -hmm. like race, religion politics those, <laughs> those kind of things right yeah okay yeah that, that makes yeah. sense yeah and if i have to i have to i mean don't get me wrong if we are at a point where i have to say something i feel like uh yeah i'm not i don't think people who knows me know that i'm not a poker face if i have to say something i will regardless you know what it is but on a normal day, on a normal, you know, interaction, whatever, you get to know people. Let's say people that I work with, you know. Um, I already probably know what their religious inclination is, their political, you know, views are. Then, you know, and I just leave it alone because we're busy interacting in different ways. So, yeah, I guess I could put more effort into that. Uh, but. Well, I mean, it's I not. It's not for I mean, I get both sides. 
I get both sides. Like when it comes to that, I understand people like yourself that just don't want to talk about those things. It makes sense. Um, and to a certain degree, I kind of feel the same way too, but I feel like I, I almost can't, like, I feel like everything else is just fluff. Like if I'm talking to somebody, you know, like, let's say if I get a, a client, you know, I could, we could talk about music and food and all, that's all good. But at the end of the day, I kind of want to know some of those, I, I, I guess I look at them as kind of like big blocks because it, it allows me to really kind of understand their, the way that their mind works a little bit. And that's what really interests me is kind of like what gets people. So, but anyway, so has that caused yeah. a little bit of a friction a little bit? between you and Bill, because Bill seems to be, um, he's heavy on the, the whole race thing. You see like every other yeah. post. No, we actually talk about these things. We have had pretty heated uh, discussions when we don't see eye to eye uh, about different things. Um, I think fundamentally we agree uh, about race and politics and the big um, issues. But um, there are certain parts that we go different, you know, there's certain topics that we don't 100% agree. So we talk about it. I love to talk with him because he's open-minded and he's ready to listen. Yeah. And, um, and I get fired up and I get, you know, I get in a row. <laughs> but um, you have to, I think, if you have the right mindset, like, you know, whoever knows him understands that he's, He's willing to listen and he's not going to judge you and all that. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love to have that kind of conversation with the right person. Mm -hmm. um, I have had friends that we start talking about politics and they're so one-sided one that to me, you can criticize both sides, you know, not, not it's not perfect. I, I'm talking about politics and they get very offended. And, you know, then once I feel... You start calling people certain names or whatever, then the then the level or the quality of the conversation just goes down. And then I have had told a couple of friends, okay, we're not talking about that ever again because we can we can do that if we want to keep our friendship going on. And yeah. that's okay with me. I mean, I don't. It is what it is. Uh, so that's what somebody told you, or that's what you told them. I told them. Oh, okay. yeah, because we were really fighting about it. Okay. And they did. To, I, I said, I'm not on the other side. I'm telling you, this side has made mistakes too. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, I feel this. Uh, um, I feel that lately you can't say anything because you're on the other side. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. People yeah. take take it not as a constructive constructive thing or okay yeah i agree with that but not everything is like that no okay you're that's it you're you're on the other side completely mm -hmm. so it's hard to to have a conversation like that i got a question for you i want to i'm, I'm curious about this yeah. um okay so uh so and, and we can shift gears too but mm -hmm. i'm just curious it came to my mind uh, cause this is, this is a question that kind of came into my mind. And if I was at lifetime, I'd be like asking everybody kind of getting a tally a little bit, but mm -hmm. anyway, so, um, when it comes to the media, so you have the news, you have, you have shows, you know, Netflix and TV, you have talk shows. So kind of like things that you're getting in through the screen also you know newspaper all that well well actually let's just focus on just the news do you feel the news the primary i'm going to give three three objectives of the news and then you rank them from the one that you think is the most true to the one that's kind of like the less okay uh -huh. so is the news is its main function to educate the people is its main function to um, get profits or is its main function to influence the way that people think? 
So rank those three in order from the one that you think is the most to the less. Let so me say educate, it again. Uh -huh. So educate people. Influence. Uh -huh. um, make profit. Uh -huh. Or influence the way people think. So which one do you think is the most? And then which one do you think is like kind of rank those in order? Uh, I think educate is at the bottom. At there. the bottom. Yeah. Okay. The other two, uh, I wanna, I wanna say influence people. Number one. Really. Make profit. Okay. To hmm. and educate. That's just my gut feeling. Well, the, I would agree with you. That's what I would say too. We agree uh, on that one. What was that? We agree on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it, 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 I'm just curious about that, too, because if that's true, then when you see things on the news uh, with that frame of mind, thinking their number one, I guess, objective is to get you to think a certain way, do you feel like that colors a little bit? I guess the reason why I'm saying this, too, is because I'm, I'm trying to figure out why there's such a divide as you see this, you know, people are like, oh, and in my guesstimation, I feel like that's one of the main reasons, because I feel like some people think that the media's main purpose is to uh, educate them, right? Oh, mm -hmm. then make a profit, then influence with it, they think. So naturally, everything that they're getting through TV, it's all the truth. But then you have other people that think it's BS. So then you have this, you have this confliction of uh, perspectives. And I feel like that's one of kind of the main reasons that you see a lot of this divide. It's just a thought that I had. So. Um, yeah, I don't think their they, their priority is to educate people. Mm -hmm. They have a, they have a purpose in, uh, whatever you watch, it has a political tint to it, a political color to it. Um, so, and people don't like to hear what they, they don't like to listen to people they don't like. That's what I'm saying. Like if they, you know, if you watch CNN, it's rare that that same person is going to flip to Fox, right? And mm -hmm. start watching and because you like, you already like what you already, what you already listening to. So you're going to keep, okay, this is what I like, this kind of, you know, um, this kind of idea. So, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't I don't think uh, the educating it's maybe it's not even there at all. <laughs> <laughs> the that's not their goal. I don't think, especially with the news. Um, hmm. Well, yeah. it's got to be a little bit because they're telling you they're telling you what's going on in the world a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I think to a large degree what you see, you know, but it's kind of like that spin, you know, it's also the way I think about it is what they're choosing to focus on. Cause I think there's so many things that they can focus on when, when I think about it, just all the things that they potentially could be talking about, but then they're talking about, let's say this subject matter over and over and over again. So it, it this is something that I, I realized when I was a kid. And of course, everyone thinks they're right, but you know, just from my perspective, I could just see these trends like focusing on um, so why do they keep focusing on this? Right. And then something would happen. I'm like, oh, you know, they've been setting that up, you know? So anyway. I don't know. I feel like um, when they, uh, when you have a political view, they just follow one line. For example, I've been following because I'm from Nicaragua, you know, I'm from Nicaragua. It's a, there's a dictatorship there. It's a socialist, it's a communist dictatorship. I similar, did not know this. Yeah, similar to Venezuela, similar wow. to Cuba. And okay. they're, all, they're all connected because uh, those kind of regimes like to support each other, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So Cuba was kind of financing and sending people to Venezuela and both were sending people and money and supporting the Nicaraguan regime. Mm -hmm. So um, when the protest started in Cuba about three weeks ago, 
Mm -hmm. um, people in Cuba were oppressed, are oppressed. They're being oppressed for what, 30, whatever years that have last, has lasted, but they weren't on the street protesting. So they're waiting, they were um, uh, like the guerrillas, like the armed forces there from the government, they were oppressing people, throwing them in jail. There's no internet there in the whole island. The government has cut the internet. So really? people, yeah. So that's why we don't see it in the news. They were some, uh, at the beginning of the protest, they were still people with some service and they were recording and sending it out. So the whole world would see, right? Yeah. So then later, I don't see it as much anymore. Uh, apparently the government uh, shut down the internet service. Um, and there is this Florida senator uh, and she's the daughter of uh, Cuban immigrants. Mm -hmm. So she is a Republic, Re Republican senator in, senator in Florida and she speaks up about it every chance she every chance she gets she's on social media about cuba cuba and uh, trying to you know do something for those people they want freedom all this but she's since she's a republican senator you only see her on fox news or mm. in her own social media outlets uh you don't see that in nbc or cnn or any other even though I think we all agree that that kind of government, it's, it's doing, it's violating human rights, it's, you know, against all these things that we aspire to have as human beings, but you don't see it in the other news outlets. So just, uh, just you, some things like that. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, that's real interesting because I've, I've, I've mentioned that to quite a few people and it, like almost everybody has no idea what's going on in Cuba. Yeah. So it's fascinating. And uh, yeah. of course that goes against the, hey, we're kind of getting, we're kind of getting into political conversation here, but uh, it goes against the narrative about, you know, um, socialism and communism is bad because you, you have these people, you can see it, what's happening, but if they, communicate it to people then they'd be like wait a minute you know we're pushing towards like socialism <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. over here so we're put, it, it seems like we're tracking in that direction so uh that's why well, i think it's interesting yeah it hasn't worked anywhere else i don't i don't see how or why it would work here but and this why... time it's different that's what they say this time oh, it's different right i don't I it's don't never know. it's never been different has right. never, has never, never, never worked. Yeah. And it I makes know sense. we were on the same page about this. So you're not, you don't see that kind of system working, do you? What was that? You don't see, it sounds like we're on the same page about that one too. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, like on the surface, it makes sense. Uh -huh. Like it, it, it makes sense. Uh, you know, I've had conversations with people about this, you know, like I, I, the idea sounds good, good intentions. Like yeah. everyone, um, I was having a conversation with one of these with my friend, he was a trainer and we we're talking about how, cause you know, like trainers, well, at least at lifetime when I was working there is hundred percent commission. Yeah. So you might not make any money. So if somebody comes and they say, Hey, we're going to just, everyone's the same. Right. Mm -hmm. Or in a, in a social socialist model, let's say bill, cause bill was there at lifetime too. Let's say him and I were killing it from a revenue standpoint but then you have some trainers that aren't doing very well, then they take some of our revenue and give it to them. Mm -hmm. So it, may, it, it makes sense on the surface, you know, um, but one of the big downsides that you don't see initially is how it demotivates you. Because let's say I'm doing really well, then why am I gonna really push and to innovate and to do a lot of the things I typically would if, if it's just gonna be kind of uh, like there's no reward. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it, it it's fascinating it, thinking about these things. But man, I, I hope that actually, you know what? I, I'm happy either way. You know what I mean? I, I, whatever. <laughs> you know what? I, I I don't know if 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 that's what happens. I mean, what am I going to do about it? But 
Well, I don't, I don't know. I hope we push back enough, back enough, not to have that kind of system. I don't, I don't, I don't see that happening here in the states. Yeah. I hope not. But, but um, you, you just have to talk to a few people like me coming from where I come, from the revolution and all Gosh. that, Cuba, Venezuela. No. People would, and and no would. They are, you know, risking their lives to come here um, for a different system. So how do you explain Oh, that? dude, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's so like, funny. It's like, it's, it, it, it's like, oh, it's so bad here. It's so bad. We're the worst yeah. country. But then everyone's yeah. trying to come over here. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. there's got to be something. There's got to be something that um, that is good, you know? so yeah i think we have or we um i think people sometimes in first world countries have reached at a level where um you are okay you're you you have probably enough food for the day right you have clothes what running water shelter so then you can start worrying about some other things that you haven't thought about it because in my country uh you probably don't have running water. You don't have air conditioning. You don't have your food for the day. I was uh, lucky enough that my parents both worked and had a way to feed us and send us to school. But not if the the vast majority of Nicaragu Nicaraguan people are not like that. They're not oh. that lucky. When so, was the last time you went there? I went there before COVID hit hard. So February of 2020, and I used to go every day, every year, but now if you follow the news, the government is uh, exercising a lot of repression and they can throw you in jail. No, um, uh, no lawyer, no nothing, no, no court day, nothing. Mm -hmm. They can throw you in jail. Nobody can reach, nobody can reach you. They don't know if you're dead or alive. And um, and then on top of that, COVID. Uh, yeah. Well, rarely, I mean, barely getting vaccines over there. Um, and everything is secrecy. Everything is, man, everything is corrupted. So the, my siblings and parents over, over there, they haven't gotten a vaccine because you don't know what they're trying to give you. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not like here. So it's, it's, of course, my perspective is from a person that wasn't born and raised here. Um, I've been here for the last 20 years of my life. I'm, I'm not a young, you know, I'm not a teenager or anything like that. So I've seen both sides. Uh, so it's different. I'm not saying that you should you should see all these bad things to recognize how good you have it, but uh, it opens your eyes to other things. Yeah, man, uh, I, I'm one of those like snobby Americans that's just so privileged to where I don't even know what it is that I have. I yeah. mean, honestly, I didn't really even appreciate this stuff until fairly recently when it when so much of it's getting threatened now. Um, yeah. cause like just things that you take for granted, just being able to say what you want. Yes. So now you see all this censorship that's happening. Um, yeah. of course it's always in the name of it's all, it, they're never going to say we're censoring this because we want to control you or we're censoring this because we're a totalitarian system. It's always for your protection or, you know, so there's always that spin to all of it. But, um, just recently I, I listened to this, this Chinese stand-up a comedian he was just talking about the united states and how you know he came from china and how over here everyone wants to come over here mm -hmm. they call it they're saying the name for america is like beautiful country and over there the name for china for themselves is middle country so he's like we have a better name for you guys than we do for ourselves mm -hmm. and um he was just mentioning how just we have so much dang stuff here like just simple things like napkins. Like I've heard people talk about going over to Asian countries and how like those kind of things, you know, is real, um, 
they don't just throw them around. You know what I mean? Here you just get a big stack of freaking napkins like it's no, nothing, you know? It just sounds goofy talking about it, but we're thinking napkins, who cares? Yeah. Over there, it's it's a big thing. Uh, and how, and, and I'm guilty. I'm guilty of it. You know, I, I just think about how freaking privileged I am. Like, so, man, like he was talking about Amazon Prime. Yeah. Like how, how now, like, we're like, no, one day delivery. No, I want it now, two, yeah. within two hours, you know, like, I don't want to do anything. Just, you know, like not, nothing. Yeah. I want one pen, one pen, and they'll deliver it right to your door in a big old cardboard box and all that. So anyway, I say all this because just, oh, one of the, the reason why it got me thinking about this is because he's talking about kind of like in the other countries where they have, you know, he's talking about how they beat him down, you know, his parents, the culture there, you know, they're just all the, all these kind of things. And they're, you know, they're struggling to get by and everyone wants to come here to be the best, but then you come here and everyone's just like, this sucks. Traffic sucks. Oh, this sucks. You know, this sucks. Oh, what? Oh, you know, complaining constantly, you know? So, but I, I actually think it would be a great idea because to kind of experience some of that, to kind of see, to put it in context, you know, to say, whoa, dude, wow, you know, yeah. um, what we got it good, you know? Yeah, I think that's uh, how most of the immigrants feel like. We mm -hmm. feel a big sense of pride that we, you know, have made it here. Uh, coming from where we come. And I think we feel a great deal of appreciation for this country. That's mm -hmm. the way. So when you hear people complaining like that, like you said, oh, well, this sucks because whatever, you know, we want the communist uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, system or whatever, you're like, oh, dang, why don't you switch with somebody over there? You know, like, oh, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's sad. But, Anyway, I, I'm I'm happy here. This is home now. Whenever I can go see my parents, I will. But who knows when that's going to be? So. Mm. Yeah, I kind of wonder. Um, I wonder if there, if it's kind of inevitable. I feel like it's almost inevitable. This this kind of series, because I would think it's like okay, you fight to get out of it, right? Let, let's say Nicaragua, right? Let's say they fight, they overturn. They say, you know, we want freedom. And, you know, we, we can't suppress the people. And they, they set in these rules. They say, you know what? People should be able to say what they want, just like what they did here when they started the country. Freedom of speech, you know, the right to bear arms. The whole point of that is really to protect yourself against the government, which yes. people think yes. it's about, mm -hmm. you know, don't get me wrong. Yes, it is to protect yourself. But really, it's the primary reason is to protect yourself against a government that gets mm -hmm. out of hand. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have guns and nothing there's nothing to stop them from doing whatever so anyway let's say nick Ragua did that right boom it, it starts flourishing it starts growing boom 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 within like a few generations they're going to be complaining again it's going to be all the same thing oh man this sucks yeah. oh they have it so good and then it's going to revert back in it just yeah. it, you know yeah at least, I, I, at least yeah. that's what it seems it like could, because we're human beings it's like uh what I was trying to say before about the, you reach a level of comfort or the human being, I should say, reaches a level of comfort, I think, that when you are worrying about the, your basic, basic things, there's no time to be, oh, well, I want to complain about this. No, it's time to hustle so you can eat your next meal, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no, actually, I read somewhere years ago, and I don't know, maybe I didn't, but this is probably common knowledge for some smart people like you and will oh yeah <laughs> that, right <laughs> you were born like that <laughs> but um i read somewhere that and actually i i i have experienced that in my first 20 years in nicaragua you don't hear so much about um psychological problems you don't hear about too much depression and oh man bipolar. totally yes. but then you now i leave i live 20 years here and mm -hmm. when you for example I work for the people who don't know me I work at a clinical research clinic uh, so we run like the COVID vaccine trials and other studies right 
So you have to take medical history from the participants. And I want to say just out of my butt, 90% of the people will report anxiety, depression, some kind of psychological problem. Mm -hmm. And not that we don't have it in the, you know, in the third world countries or anything, Mm -hmm. but I think people focus more because like I said, you reach a level of comfort that you're not worried about the food anymore. You're not worried about the shelter or anything like that. You worry about this other, you have these other needs, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you feel out of place. Maybe you feel like you need attention, whatever, right? So you have, you start having those feelings. So um, I think that's- It's so, uh, kind of, totally fascinating. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, when you look at uh, suicide, it's like almost exclusively a privileged luxury. Like yeah. the people that are killing themselves are the ones that have the most money. And you kind of see this, too, with uh, celebrities and things like that. Like, like, just think about that. When, when I think about suicide, I'm just like, oh, man, man, like your whole body is hardwired to keep you alive. Everything is just trying to keep you alive. Your desire for hunger, your desire for this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's just trying to sustain that. So to override everything and kill yourself, man. So just, I just find it real interesting that it it happens. Like you're not going to see people, don't get me wrong. Like you said, this isn't always, but yeah, like in in these poor countries and neighborhoods, they're they're not killing themselves, you know, it's... Mm -hmm. It's when you have, and, and I'm not saying that having a lot of things is wrong either. I'm just saying that there is definitely a connection between kind of like what you say. And I kind of wonder, I, I agree with what, what you're saying as far as, you know, you're, you're focusing on just trying to make ends meet versus letting your mind go all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's other factors involved too. Um, you remember when COVID first hit and then workout help out was, collecting funds and we gave out gift cards Mm -hmm. did you ever give out any or no I didn't give out any but I was writing the oh okay oh yeah thank you I didn't I didn't go though Mm -hmm. okay so I I I did go so I was going into like these poor neighborhoods in San Antonio Mm -hmm. uh during during COVID and stuff like that and man I was driving almost everybody's out on their porch families together kind of running around and everything and I was like man that must be really good for their brain that's probably another reason like the more as you get into like you know again I'm not saying right or wrong I'm just pointing out a connection between kind of mental health but you go into these kind of uh, more wealthy neighborhoods and the houses are bigger they're more separated they don't really know their neighbors the families aren't as tight like you're seeing like in these poor neighborhoods, when I'll go to give them cards, these kids would run up to me, you know, and the, you know, the grandma's there and they're just all like having fun riding on their bikes and all this. And it kind of made me kind of, I, I don't know what the word is. It's not a jealousy, but I was, I kind of yearned for that. You know, I yearned for the, like, I wanted to be in that, you know, like I wanted to experience that community versus compartmentalization here you know like I'm not a rich guy I have like a decent home or whatever but everyone's in their own little silos here you know yeah um so anyway I feel like that's one I feel like that's maybe another factor into the mental health thing definitely yeah I'm sure there's some article that explains all that somewhere (laughs) 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 we're trying to figure it out over here hey I agree So to shift gears a little bit, oh, look at that. Look at that water bottle you got. Yeah. I need to change the sticker. I haven't changed the sticker yet. Oh, I know a guy who can hook you up. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Mine's just this. Sorry. You drink all that um, in a day? Is that your gold bottle? No. No. I don't really have a water goal. Okay. I I just drink water when I'm thirsty. Yeah. So what, what's up with you in an exercise? Um, what have you, you been doing these days? I'm excited about my exercise routine, actually. I feel like I've... Trouble connecting to the internet. Check your Wi-Fi network connection by going... 
What's that? It's one of your workout help out tablets. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Let He's me saying, see. Oh, did, is it because we said workout help out or something? I don't know. Is, do you see it? I do. Hey, trouble, trouble connecting to the internet or something. Oh. Daddy, daddy. <laughs> He's calling you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, I work out every morning. I, my alarm goes off at five and five or five AM uh -huh. and I do it before I go to work because after I come back, after I come back from work, it's, I'm done. It's, I, uh, I respect that. I do too. I mean, I didn't think I try when I started working, I thought, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to work out when I come back. <laughs> no. <laughs> There, it's yeah. really it's really a struggle so I decided to do that and I've been doing it I try not to break my routine um so how does it work like you wake up then what I wake up I change restroom whatever put my mm -hmm. hair up and go in the garage and, and then what uh, I've been I've been working now with beach body on the men uh, okay how does that work uh, it's good I like it I just but is it like a like is it on the internet it's a, yeah, it's a website app. If you okay. want, yeah. So you pay a membership. It's like, it's very cheap, hundred and something a year. So uh, of course they offer you all this other stuff that I don't buy memberships and uh, VIP access and nutrition and all that. I don't, I don't spend that money. Um, but uh, there is, there is all kinds of programs. So if you want to stick, let's say there's a two program lift, lift weights with dumbbells, right? Mm -hmm. I, some programs I follow from beginning to end. And how long is a program? It depends. Uh, you mean every day? Well, what I mean or, is like, do you go through, do you just randomly choose videos or is it like, I'm going to go through this th three month program right. where. Yes. So there is. There is one that I was following two weeks and then it goes a little bit more advanced another two weeks and you okay. can repeat that. And there's another one that is like six weeks uh, with a little step in cardio. It depends on what you want to do. I. So are they I five have, days like five, five days. days? There's always in those programs, there's always a recovery day normally. Mm -hmm. And Saturday and Sunday, I try to work out with Will because his work outside. I feel they're awesome and they're short, but he pushes me. I wouldn't do a pull up on my own, you know, at five in the morning. There's no way I, the workouts that I do Monday through Friday are more with dumbbells on the floor, on a mat, cardio in the same place or whatever. Cause I don't even, I don't even get the car out uh, of the garage. Need, oh, okay. So it's just a small space, my computer, and get it done and that how long do those so last 30 40 minutes some of them are 25 minutes um and like i said one of the days is a recovery day uh they have some of the programs are split in um upper body and lower body and abs or core twice a week so um uh, once I feel like I need to switch, then I pick another program and I try to follow it. Uh, if, if I don't follow it every day, maybe I'll pick from the same program, but not in the sequence they have it set up. Um, but um, I like it, it's just a way of, I feel like I need to keep moving and I feel like I have more energy in the morning if I do that. So, and it pushes me to try to go to bed early, which I don't accomplish what's early before 11 p.m <laughs> so are you going to what time do you go to sleep like 12 sometimes around 11 but my goal would be before 11 for sure okay so like let's say you go to sleep at 11 you wake up at five so you're getting like six hours mm -hmm. okay and on and the weekends i take naps for sure and and you feel good at six at 6 p.m.? No, six hours. Six, oh, I probably need more. And some days I really, some days I come home and we try to go to bed earlier, like around 10, 9.30, okay. 10. Okay. Yeah. 
Man, I remember when I was at Lifetime and I was waking up at like 4, 4.30. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You have a class at 5 or 6? At, at 6, but I'll get there normally at least by 5.30, kind of prepare everything, you know, reserve mm -hmm. the space, all that. Um, and I'm glad that I did it, you know, it's good. But I remember, I remember... I don't know how long, but my, my attitude started to change, like my, my personality a little bit. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'm just like, hey, dude, what's up? You know, uh, you know, but like I wasn't really acting like that. You know, it's not like I was like sad. I just wasn't pumped up. Mm -hmm. And then there was a couple of times where I slept more and I was like, oh, and I started to connect it. Yeah. I was like, dang, dude, I'm all pumped up when I sleep more, you know, um, no, real quick, though, about that workout, though, with Bill, because he told me he works out for like 10, 15 minutes. So is that what yeah. it is? Yes. So are you guys doing like a heavy lift? Or are you doing like an AMRAP, some kind of circuit or? It's everything. He normally doesn't have a plan when we go to, out in the garage. Um, if we lift, it's heavy with the bar. Well, heavy for me. So How's much. your back? Better, better. Uh, I think I, I, I thought I, I would get results, I guess, sooner than what I did when I did. That's why I was like, this surgery didn't work. <laughs> but I think it did. I, and this is, I think, the best it's going to get. So I still, my uh, disc or the nerve in my back gets uh, squished by the disc, by the mm -hmm. bulging disc that I have. So that creates its own kind of neuropathy. So my right leg feels weird, like numb. Neuropathies are really, it's a tricky thing to be able to explain. I talk to a lot of people who have uh, diabetic neuropathy and whoever doesn't have it won't understand what you're talking about. It's like numbness and pain. It's like tingling sometimes. It's like when you're running, you feel like your leg is moving, but you're not really feeling uh, feeling the impact like on the other leg. It's just weird. But um, I uh, I think that's the best it's gonna get. I don't think uh, I don't think it's gonna get better than this. I'm I'm strong as I was before the surgery. I think mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't push and lift super heavy because I'm still kind of nervous about that. But I don't think I need to either, you know. Are you a deadlifting heavy weight or no? Well, when I injured my back, I was, but right. I wasn't doing it consistently. And I think that's what happened, that I just you went just, for it that you day. You went in there and did it. I did the same thing. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Do you remember how much you lifted? I, I don't remember. You think that's what happened? I thought that's what happened no, for sure. That's what happened, but I don't remember the weight that I. Made. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember the exact moment. I thought somebody was, um, that somebody was behind me, uh -huh. and I even looked after I lifted and sat it down. I look back. I'm like, who is behind me? Like somebody touched me or whipped yeah. me in the back, uh -huh. and no, nobody was there, and I thought it would go away, and it never did. Huh. Yeah. Man. What happened to you? Uh well, I kind of I kind of have this ongoing it, it kind of comes and goes like back pain, neck pain, all kind of stuff. But anyway, um the thing that at the time at was aggravating the most was front squats or overhead press. Mm -hmm. And I went into a I went into a CrossFit box. And they just happened to be maxing out front squats that day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the, the lady at the front, cause it's my first time there. She's like, she's like, we're maxing out on front squats, but ah, you won't do that. Obviously, you know, like, like def, like telling me, you know, you won't do it. And, uh, at that time, I mean, still right now, right now, the weights I lift are 12 pounds. That's like, that's wow. the kind of weight that I lift right now. Okay. Be because, cause that's what I'm doing in class. Like, I don't, I don't, uh, like I haven't worked out in my garage with like traditional weight like you and I don't know, several months. 
Okay. But uh, I know I can still do it. So, for example, one of my clients, she she bench pressed, I want to say it was 135. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's like, can you do that? I was like, I'm pretty sure I can. You know, I haven't done it in so long. And I, I tried it and I was able to do it pretty easy. But mm -hmm. my point is, is I don't do... I don't do heavy weights anymore. Not, not that I think it's wrong. I just don't do it. I just haven't done it. So I went in there doing nothing when it comes to, you know, like no, no deadlifts, no back squats, nothing front squats. Mm -hmm. And then I was surprised how strong I was. And I, like, I just kept going up in weight. I forgot how much I did, but I mean, if I, if I remember right, it might've been like 245, 255, something like that, but on a front squat. And uh, I did it and it, like, I felt like something, you know? And then after that, dude, my back was just toast, dude. One, one time I was doing the class, it was shortly after the virtual class. And um, I just had to stop. Like I, I, I kind of just had to not do the moves anymore. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I laid down and then I couldn't get up. And I had to call my client on my phone and say, hey, I can't get up, you know, um, and I, I crawled up the stairs and I laid in bed and then I, I just stayed in bed and I couldn't get out. Like I started to get worried because I started to get real thirsty and I couldn't even get my phone. I couldn't even reach over to pick up my phone because just picking up my phone, I couldn't do it. What? yeah it was crazy man I always just I was bet I started getting scared because I couldn't yeah. get out of bed and I couldn't even call because like I said I couldn't even reach over like yeah. if I was perfectly still I was okay but just like, what? Just ah, trying like to move. Mm -hmm. yeah anyway, so what I, happened I, do you move and do you scream to be able to get out of bed and yes I forgot what happened I don't know what happened I think I forced myself to uh Man, I don't know. I forgot how I got out of it. I, I'm pretty sure I somehow forced myself to get the phone and I called Bill. And uh, I want to say he offered me some muscle relaxers or something. I don't remember, but. Maybe they were mine. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Who knows, no. man? I, I forgot yeah. what I did, but eventually it got better. Now, now I feel great. You know, like my back's good, all that. So, of course, That's there's always cool. like. Yeah. cycling through different injuries but hey it is it's the best it's gonna get probably my that's back over yeah that's probably as recovered as you you're gonna get right i i feel good good I feel good man my back's great actually bill he did um before my neck would give me problems too to where the point where like i couldn't really turn my head yeah uh -huh. and um Anyway, he ended. Oh, actually, you know what, Bill? He 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 did some dry needling on my on my mm -hmm. trap, and then mm -hmm. he did on my back. Man, that dry needling totally helps me. Like that it's is painful, so good. Though. It's painful. I feel. I feel like yeah. it feels good. It feels like like somebody's just hitting you. You know yeah. what I mean? That's how it feels to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've done it, obviously, right? Yes. I whatever I can get for free. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, get up, you probably get everything for free. Well, yeah, but not that he's in the mood to do anything after work or, you know, seeing clients or whatever. I'm like, can you do this? And I, I need a massage. Me. I need an adjustment. I need a massage. Can you crack my back? Um, so anyway. Hey, so switching gears again. Um, are you following the Afghanistan mess? Yesterday, no. today, I don't watch on? any. I don't watch any news, so I don't know what's going on now. I heard no, seriously. I like seriously. Like, what do you I, I, watch? Uh, I've been watching Breaking Bad. <laughs> you know what that is? Yes, I finished it a couple of years ago. Okay, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, me too. I, I I'd start watching it again. I just I don't have TV, but I I I, I, I know that I know what was that. On your phone. Yeah, I guess I could. I, I get a lot of my news through people like you, kind of communicating it to me, and then through um, certain individuals on YouTube and things like that, kind of speaking about it, but almost never through the directly through the news. To go back to what we we're saying before, I just when I hear them talk, I just feel like they're just trying to get me to think a certain way. So it's just I don't know what to believe, but I do know there's something going on. I heard about it. 
yeah was, and there's was images on. you don't need to listen to the whole you know narrative but what's going on you don't know no i don't i really don't what's going on well the american troops are leaving afghanistan okay and the taliban is taking over the country oh. again okay so between yesterday and the day before uh they were the taliban was taking the capital kabul really wow but um and i know it's to me well to see all those you know people is sad and uh some veterans also have voice their um i don't know how to call it they are their disappointment i think um because they're thinking we went there our friends died there a bunch of people died and what for so mm -hmm. it's like they they don't know what the purpose of being there all that time was or anything but um without getting too much into the political thing um what was sad the one of the saddest thing of course besides people uh again oppression death corruption you know jail mm -hmm. and all that is that during this last 20 years that the us troops were there women and girls were able to get education and maybe have a job and um for the whatever i think their loss right that support that kind of system where women are uh is so restrictive for them but mm -hmm. it was softened while the american troops were there and i think uh a lot of people think and it's in the news that that's going to be all wiped out and mm -hmm. uh it, they're going to go back to being very restrictive with uh women's rights mm. so they don't want women to get educated they want them to get married very early and be dependent uh to men so yeah just sad about that yeah yeah that's tough yeah it's just more more it's more crap. what more crap more bs more bs yeah well we've been talking for about an hour yeah i think we, we had better you better peace out i better go get ready you got, for it. you gotta go get those z's z's yeah my z's are important <laughs> well thanks for chit chatting hopefully you had a little bit of fun well i did hopefully somebody uh had some fun too maybe they have some maybe fun. one person no one maybe watches one these one. things maybe will will watch us he maybe. likes us he yeah likes us both <laughs> all right all right well good chit chat same here we can enjoy. do it again whenever yeah enjoy your night you too come by for for coffee sometime oh yeah and sandwiches don't forget the sandwiches and the salad <laughs> all, all right. right nice seeing you paul you too bye bye bye